Hello and welcome back to Data News of the Week. The video will be tag all the little blibs and blobs of news that involve data that have happened this week and squeeze it into one giant data burst. And I'll be straight with it, it is a biggie this week. We have got so much stuff to cover. So let's not waste any time and just crack on. As you can see from here on screen, probably the biggest story for me this week is that the, the hack that has happened over in China with um, uh, an alleged 1 billion Chinese citizens uh, on their information, I should say, being stolen from the police databases over there. Now, this contains everything according to several news reports. I've picked the Guardian one here. But again, we are talking names, addresses, birthplaces, personal information and details of criminal records and more. It's an enormous incident that's happened over there. But what's really interesting is watching the Chinese kind of hidden machine of censorship kicking in very, very quick. And although there are, you know, a handful of quite big high profile news outlets there's been very very few smaller outlets talking about this and we've seen lots of dead links online that we've had to go into a lot of the google cache and wayback machine to find out in the handful of days i think it's two or three days at the time of recording um since this properly broke and as we can see when you look online not to submit so much the social feed of the stuff and a lot of the bots getting involved but just a sh the sheer scale of information uh, that this is apparently alleged to contain. Again, a lot of people are calling it potentially one of the biggest data leaks or data hacks, whatever you want to use, in history. But the problem at the moment is, with so much of the censorship going on, the scale of this is not really known. We're hearing different numbers from 23 terabytes on a billion citizens to 330,000 citizens and something like 10 gig and uh, 10 terabytes. So the information is thrown around and uh, changing all the time, and there have been leaked samples floating around online as well. So this is going to be one of those stories that's going to um, either spin out and be everywhere in the next 48 to 72 hours or it's going to quietly disappear into the night and sadly I'm slightly worried it's going to be the latter um, of the two of them there but again do keep an eye out for this because this is the kind of scale of hack that everyone needs to know about and I'm slightly worried that no one's going to know about within the next week. Next up from Apple Insider, it's something a number of us have suspected on one form or another for a while but it looks like Drobo maybe going against the wall. They haven't completely said this to be the case, but they have filed earlier this week, or within the last week or so, I should say, for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Again, there's loads of information on this. Apple Insider pretty much hit this before everyone else have gone into quite a lot of detail. They were going as far as to link towards the actual petition for bankruptcy declaration there. Now, um, sources, according to them, have said that this isn't the end, and they are actually going to go with the restructuring internally, and this isn't them saying that it's game over, but I'm Unfortunately, generally, when you get to this part, this is either when the company gets bought out by someone else consolidated or completely shut to, you know, com down completely and then consolidated, at least on a hardware and production level, into other services. Uh, Drobo, for a number of, I want to say months, but realistically, the last year to year and a half, they are a company that's slowly but surely disappeared, whether it was because of uh, production difficulties that they were keen to on their Twitter and a few other social media platforms where they were saying that their supply lines had still been hit by coronavirus um, uh, impacted services at production level over in the East. But as much as I'd love to believe that, I am also acutely aware that Drobo have been a brand that have not exactly been breaking the mould now for two or three years and long before the outbreak we were seeing a lot of um, hardware shortages and a lot of their Thunderbolt, the RAID 5 bay and the 8 bay to a point where it looked like they completely suspended that. And as for their NAS uh, series, when we did see innovations, I believe around four to five years ago with the 5D2, it was nowhere near the same hardware standard. A lot of the rest of the technology in the NAS industry was hitting towards. And although uh, their social media platforms are still working, I think it would be safe to say that quiet is how I would describe a lot of those social services at the moment. And again, head over to Apple Inside, particularly the forum pages there where there's a lot of discussion about this. But uh, Drobo is one of the earliest brands I covered here on the channel back in the early days. And it's a real shame to see them kind of going out into the night a little bit there but again for a number of us again one simple search online will show you that a lot of people have seen the writing on the wall for a while we will be kind of doing a focus video next week on drobo talking about if you are or were about to be a drobo buyer what your options are right now and what the other brands are offering you so do stay tuned for that but otherwise if you were on the verge of buying a drobo product uh, right now i would most I'd seriously reconsider that option based on the information we've seen today. 
And back onto another story of a data breach. It has been a hell of a week, let me tell you about this. Uh, Hotel Marriott, uh, not a stranger, I would say, uh, to hacks and leaks, but we will touch on that in just a moment, has had to admit they've had another breach. The third one, apparently, according to the register, in four years. I was only aware of one of the other ones, by the way. I believe we covered it on, an, on one of our first news videos. Um, of 20 gigabytes of data that included uh, credit card information and, and internal documentation. And again, as in embarrassing as these are it is absolutely uh, magnified and duplicated considerably when you look at the you know the level of the ones that have happened before 383 million booking records with unencrypted passport numbers boom hacked and that was back in 2019 and then fast forward to march 2020 you know when the pandemic started and most of us stopped looking at our watches again but due to uh, the compromising of two employee logins, we saw 5.2 million guest uh, guest information packages exchanged out. And again, if you have a stay, if you have stayed with a hotel Marriott in the last few years, it might be worth looking into that. Whenever you uh, utilize a lot of Google services and it says that your information or your log information may have uh, been leaked in a data leak somewhere, do not be surprised if. One was one of the Marriott leaks from 2020 there. But um, what's going on with this one right now? It may not seem like much, 20 gigabytes in the grand scheme of things. But once you, you know, think of how little space, simple, personal information that isn't even photographical can take up, 20 gig can suddenly be hundreds of thousands, if not millions of documents very, very easily there. So again, this is just another shot in the foot by Marriott in terms of their internal security there. And you would think, you know, on the third roll of the dice on this one, it is absolutely catastrophic that this could happen for a third time in such a brief window period. A quick addendum there to the end when I was preparing the links for today's news video this morning over my breakfast. In the meantime, since then, as we get to the end of the 7th of July today, there has been an update to this story that I hadn't seen. And that is the company is notifying three to 400 individuals that they believe um, have been affected, you know, um, exclusively, oh, not about exclusively, but have definitely been affected in a very negative and impactful way by this incident. They do mention about some of the internal documentation is not to be concerned with, but still nonetheless, Three to four hundred individuals and twenty to you know twenty gigabytes of data that seems very odd to me, and I would be prepared to question uh, the actual extent of that amount or uh, that frequency of people that are being contacted by this. And on to new products. There have been quite a few interesting new products this week. Uh, TerraMaster has been in our Data News of the Week videos for a while now, uh, largely because they keep releasing a lot of their new series of NAS. And I'm probably going to rein things back a little bit now, but the reason I wanted to touch on this is... Uh, the most recent releases in their rack mount series from TerraMaster have all had something in common that a number of us have been requesting for a while. And that is that all of these ranges of 4, 8, 12 and 16 bay uh, rack mounts are all arriving with Celeron powered processors inside. So this is something we've never really seen. QNAP kind of engages with it a little bit, but... No, like TerraMaster offering BTRFS file system on their uh, NASes along with that flexible RAID system, that T-RAID, means that having a lot of these more affordable rack mounts that are powered by Celeron, whether you want to use TOS5 or you want to install Unraid or TrueNAS on these via that USB dongle, it's quite interesting to see that they are really hitting hard on the Celeron processor in their ranges because a lot of people want that embedded processor um, server power but on a rack mount form and TerraMaster really seems to be fleshing things out in that portfolio. Alongside that MSI I've started rolling out uh, a, thund uh, a Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 card um, for a lot of the older lake powered processors and motherboards there which I know normally I wouldn't highlight but the number of people that are running 12th gen uh, Intel Core processors right now is pretty broad and there's a large number of processors that have been rolling out in the world and again uh, the backwards compatibility of this I'm not 100% certain about but I will be bench testing it myself if it's the case because I'm running an 11th gen um, i5 that I believe may be compatible with this but I'll have to because I know I'm running an MSI motherboard there. Um, another new release there from High Point, carrying on on the subject of USB and um, further performance there. Rather than USB 4, um, High Point have started unveiling uh, the latest addition to a growing range of USB 3.2 X2 adapters there with these ports, each one putting out 20 gigabits per second. And with USB 
uh, USB um, 3.2 Gen 2 X2 adapters arriving more and more on the market that support additional SSDs and M2s. This range of PCIe cards that are coming in at quite an affordable little price in some cases may well be up your alley. Next up, another sort of new release, something I should have covered a few weeks ago here on the news and somehow it passed me by and it is that Asus Store's own NAS software AM, has gone into version 4.1. So if you're running an Asus Store NAS and you're running auto upload, there's a chance you may not have had the latest firmware updated to 4.1 because this is a bigger step up rather than little security patches there. It does bring a few improvements in file transit as well as improvements in their Dr. Acer store, which is kind of their health checking system built in, as well as improvements with security certificates, a lot of the back end stuff of ADM, BTRFS improvements as well with the latest kernel of Linux and more. So they have brought improvements in and you can test out a demo of ADM 4.1 if you're on the verge of buying an Asus store now or go ahead and you can download um, ADM 4.1 directly from their site so again rolling out ADM 4.1 a lot of the NAS brands recently have all rolled out some substantial version upgrades to their platforms and it's nice to see the Asus store ADM 4.1 um, update arriving and I cannot believe I didn't spot it so again more for me for me give, uh, not seeing it till now Finally, for date news of the week, we have uh, literally 15 minutes ago before I started recording a new um, attack vector of ransomware that is being targeted at some QNAP NAS devices. This is the Checkmate ransomware, and again, going to their security advisor, they have highlighted it quite early doors, and it's taken advantage of um, if you have remote access SMB. Um, services that is remote so via the internet you've opened up the port there um, and it does um, try to allow access to login window there and again this is by no means a kind of high level root login here this is just accessing any kind of shared storage via that um, that portal point there you've enabled via the SMB remote access and from there it's going to be the standard repeated um password information you know a dictionary attack that's what i'm looking for there um again kind have literally just opened a case on this there's not a huge amount of information on this right now at the time of recording if there is further on this i'll do a dedicated video or update things on nas compares um but at the moment i can't really assess just how serious this is right now simply because the, the attack pattern for this does seem a little bit different and most users are likely to have either two-step authentication or they're going to be using randomized port information or they're going to be using auto fail over uh, auto fail or auto block methodology with regards to the login attempts there and the actual window of attack here is incredibly narrow but still nonetheless this is something that some users may wish to be aware of and if you do have weak passwords or you're not already using auto updates on your firmware update which again given the way things have gone in the last few years with ransomware attacks on different NAS brands not just QNAP it would astound me if you're not using auto updates up to this point anyway but again I'll keep an eye on this and if more comes out on this I'll have a video up for you guys in the next few days but I wanted to include it in the news video just in case something on you know this helps someone out right now before you get hit in any bad way and that's about it. I mean, real quick, before I disappear now from the news of the week, I will highlight, of course, for those who aren't aware, that Monday and Tuesday next week is Amazon Prime Day. So if you were on the verge of looking for something half decent in terms of data storage, again, if you do have that Prime account and that money coming out of your, you know, your bank account every month, you might as well take advantage of it if you were looking to buy stuff anyway. Now, much like I do on previous Prime Days and Black Friday, myself and Eddie will be looking for deals that we would personally buy. I might put out a video for like two, three minutes minutes uh, on Monday and Tuesday with any of the deals that I spot that I would personally buy and therefore I would recommend and any deals that uh, myself or Eddie or you can follow the, um, the the website um, do follow do get added to this database here so we're adding deals all the time and there's a link to this article in the description there that will give you more information on that and it basically breaks down all the deals we've seen thus far that are either prime day deals or promotional deals around that time and if you scroll down through that article there's lots of information about the right ways to find deals as well as NASs that I predict will either be on sale or have offers around about that similar time and don't forget that if you go to the Amazon warehouse you do get I think another 20 percent off they've done it every year so again if you don't mind second hand give it a go but again there's links there to products that i would recommend looking out for that are either going to be on offer or are going to be products that i would still recommend nonetheless rather than you know getting doubled over for a deal that you don't even need but otherwise thank you so much for watching this has been data news of the week subscribe like would it 
suits your preference. Again, stay tuned for all that stuff that I mentioned earlier on in the video for future content next week regarding Drobo and perhaps any kind of evol um, evolution or escalation of this QNAP attack. And apart from that, have a great weekend and I'll see you guys next time.